Hello and welcome to episode one of Up and Running with Lacework. My name is Scott Ford and I'm a principal architect here at Lacework. My colleagues and I were spending a lot of time right now talking to our customers about how security teams need to focus on collaboration. They need to focus on collaborating with developers and operations and production engineers and SREs to enable them to ship their software products fast, but of course, without sacrificing security. Now there's a phrase that's getting thrown around a lot right now. It's actually been around for, for a number of years, but I still think it personifies this really well. And it's this idea of guardrails, not gates. The idea that security teams need to move away from that old mindset of blocking teams and blocking changes and embrace a culture of collaboration. Now, like much of what we do here at Lacework, we believe that a large part of this collaboration is a data problem to solve. Security teams should be working to provide relevant security data to application teams' existing workflows so they can automate even more. and They can shift security left earlier in the build process. Now, the Up and Running with Lacework series is all about putting DevSecOps theory into practice. And in this session, we're going to be focused on integrating Lacework's container vulnerability service into a continuous integration pipeline to test Docker containers for build vulnerabilities at build time. And if you haven't guessed it already, the CI tool that we're going to be working with is Jenkins. And Jenkins is about as ubiquitous a product in DevOps tooling as there is. It's extremely versatile to configure continuous delivery pipelines to build and deploy just about any artifact out there. And it provides a ton of flexibility for integrating with other products. Additionally, it's also a great opportunity to shift left and inject security earlier into the software development lifecycle through the use of automated testing. Um, with the outcome of this, of course, being that you're gonna spend less time uh, less effort and potentially significantly less money trying to fix these vulnerabilities in production. Now there's already a multitude of books and articles and online tutorials on Jenkins and Docker and CICD. So rather than trying to dive in and to any of those topics deep, we're going to focus all of our attention on just getting this integration of Lacework APIs into Jenkins. But before we do that, let's talk about who this is really geared for. If you're a security engineer, maybe you don't have any experience with Jenkins, but you know that Jenkins is in use inside your environment. You want to find ways that you can collaborate more with the teams that are responsible for building, deploying, maintaining applications, then this is for you. Now, if you're a developer, you're a production or operations engineer, you're using Lacework internally, you believe that security is everybody's responsibility and you too want to integrate more security into the SDLC, and this also is for you. Now, it's not limited to those personas. If you are a doer, if you're a maker, you just like to learn new technologies and you want to collaborate, then you too may find this valuable. But no, this is not a deep dive. It's not a deep dive on Lacework. It's not a deep dive on continuous integration, continuous delivery. This is short and to the point. You should be able to complete this tutorial in about 30 minutes. So let's dive into what we're going to build. We're going to use Docker on the local laptop to spin up a Jenkins environment. This Jenkins environment is where we're going to build our pipeline, of course, and it's going to connect to Docker Hub and pull down some sample source code that we've already prepared for you. We're going to build a Docker container. We're going to publish that up to Docker Hub. And then once we do that, we're going to call the Lacework APIs to kick off a scan of that newly built image and return the results to the Jenkins pipeline. But in order to do this, you are going to need to have some prereqs. Of course, you're going to need to have a Lacework account. You should have Git installed. You should have a GitHub account. You should have Docker Desktop installed. And you'll need a Docker Hub account to be able to publish the container to. Now, all of this too, you should feel comfortable on the command line. And I'm guessing that if you've got these prereqs installed, you already are uh, comfortable on the command line. I'm on Mac OS. I'm going to be using iTerm2 with, uh, with Z Shell. But whatever, whatever uh, shell you want, just, just have one ready. But if you've got those prereqs ready to go, then we're ready to dive right in. So let's get going. All right. So as I mentioned, we've prepared all the source code that you're going to need for this tutorial. And so the first thing you'll need to do is open up a browser and head on over to GitHub. Uh, go to github.com slash Scott Ford dash LW forward slash Jenkins dash Lacework dash tutorial. So github.com forward slash Scott Ford dash LW 
Jenkins-Lacework-Tutorial. I'll put the link to this in the notes for the video. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fork this code over to my own personal GitHub account, and you're going to need to do the same. So up in the upper right corner, right hand corner, just go ahead and click fork. And I'm going to choose my personal GitHub account. Great. Now that the code has been forked over to my personal GitHub account, I'm going to go ahead and clone this down to my local laptop. So I'll click the code button right here. I'm going to copy this link to the clipboard, move over to the terminal, and we'll go ahead and run uh, a git clone. So git clone uh, of that uh, URL. I'm going to clone this down now. Perfect. And now I'm going to CD into that directory. Again, it's Jenkins lacework, Jenkins-lacework-tutorial. And if I LL, you'll see that there's a number of files in here. There's a Docker file, there's a Jenkins file, there's a license, there's a readme, a readme and a Docker compose file. So let's go ahead and take a look at what these are all about. All right, so from top to bottom, we've got a Docker file. This is the world's simplest Docker file probably. Uh, we are actually gonna build the Lacework CLI. That's the Lacework command line interface that we use to interact with our APIs. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's just really simple. It's just gonna uh, build from CentOS 8. We're gonna run a yum update on it and we're gonna pull down and install the Lacework CLI. Next up is we've got a, uh, a Jenkins file. And if you're not familiar with Jenkins, this is how uh, one of the ways that you can create pipelines inside of Jenkins. That's one of the most common ways. You've got uh, a uh, pipeline as code. We're gonna define some different stages that we wanna run for this. So in this particular pipeline, we've got three different stages defined. We've got a uh, build stage. So from line three down to line 16, uh, you can see that we're going to, uh, we'll clone down this code we will uh, run a Docker build of this uh, of the Lacework CLI, and once it's built, we're just going to run a quick Lacework dash dash help to make sure that the uh, the container built successfully. If we get a successful Lacework dash dash help, we can move on to the push stage, and in this push stage, we're going to publish up an image to Docker Hub, and uh, and we'll go ahead and tag that with the build number as well as a tag of latest for that uh, for the image that we publish. Now, once the image is uh, published, then we're going to move into the third stage of this pipeline, and this is, of course, the Lacework vulnerability scan stage. And um, and for that, the Lacework uh, we're going to be specifying a build agent, a, a custom build agent for this stage. If you look up above, you can see here it says agent any. So this is good, would use any, any agent to be able to, to build. It's, of course, got to have Docker installed, but uh, to, to build the Docker container and then push this up to Docker Hub. But when it comes to the Lacework stage of scanning the vulnerability, we've made this really easy. We build the Lacework CLI, the command line interface, as a Docker container for every single release that we cut. And the Lacework CLI is a simple interface with our APIs, so we can just run this as a shell command. So once with this particular build agent of our Lacework CLI right here, we're going to be able to run the command Lacework vulnerability scan against the image that we just built, and it will return those results right back to the Jenkins pipeline. Now, there's some other things that we're going to be talking through. Uh, this, this particular Jenkins file has a number of environment variables that we're going to need to configure inside of Jenkins. And the Lacework CLI also has a number of environment variables that we can configure so we can authenticate with the Lacework APIs and, and know which account we're authenticating with and so on. So we'll talk about that in just one second. Now, finally, uh, we've got, uh, let's see, not, not finally, we'll, we'll check. First of all, we've got a Docker Compose file. This Docker Compose file is how we're going to be able to launch out Jenkins on our local laptop. So with the prereqs installed, this Jenkins, uh, this Docker Compose file uh, contains everything you need for our Jenkins environment. We're going to define a Jenkins network, a Docker network called Jenkins. We're going to define two volumes for uh, persistence for our Jenkins environment. We have two images that we're going to spin up. The first is the official Jenkins CI Blue Ocean build. 
And then we're also going to be launching out a, uh, an image called Docker and Docker. And this is when we looked at the Jenkins file, there was the agent uh, any. Uh, this, this image right here is a Docker container that has Docker installed on it so we can run Docker commands. So, uh, so with those two images running, we'll have a full environment for Jenkins and it'll be really easy to get going. Now, finally, uh, in this repo is the README. And all the stuff that we're going to be talking about today, uh, that I'm, gonna, I'm basically just going to walk you right through the README. So if you want to go through this again in another time, uh, revisiting the topics we covered, it's all in the README for you. All right, so let's just go ahead and dive right into this. So I'm going to scroll down. All right, we've already talked about what we're going to build. We said we're going to spin up our own Jen uh, Jenkins environment. We've already cloned down the repo, and we've CD'd into the Jenkins Lacework tutorial. So the instructions say the first thing that we're going to need is an API token for us to be able to authenticate with Laceworks APIs. So I'm already logged into my Lacework account here. My account is called tech-ally. And if you click on the settings button in the upper right hand corner here, you'll take, it'll take you to your account settings. And then the top right here is an API key section. So I'm going to go ahead and click create new API key. I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this Jenkins-Tutorial, and we'll go ahead and click Save. And now I've got a new API key. So I'm going to go ahead and click this download link right here, and that will download that to my local laptop. And I'm going to say Show in Finder. We'll go ahead and pull this over. And I'm just going to pull, uh, drop this into my terminal right here, into iTerm2. And I'm going to cat out the contents for this. Now, these are secrets. There is a secret in this file. Don't worry about it. Mine will be deleted as soon as I finish recording this video. But just want to get a sense of what's in this uh, particular JSON. You've got a key ID, which is this right here, and you've got your secret. And we're going to need both of those to configure Jenkins. All right, so we've got our API token. So the next thing we're we'll do is let's go ahead and launch out uh, Jenkins. And so we can see here with Docker Compose, uh, we're going to be able just to run this command Docker Compose dash p lacework up dash d. So let's go ahead and do that. Run over here and clear the terminal and paste that in. Docker Compose up dash d. All right, so I'm going to run Docker PS. See here, I've got two uh, images that are running. I've got the Jenkins CI Blue Ocean and the Docker and Docker. And the name for this Jenkins instance is Jenkins under, uh, sorry, Lacework underscore Jenkins underscore one. All right, so let's see what's up next here. All right. So it says, when Jenkins starts up the first time, it automatically creates an administrator password that we will need to log in. This is, uh, uh, it's unique on every single instance. So in order to get that password, we need to run this command right here. This Docker exec command will run a cat of uh, var Jenkins home secrets initial admin password, and we should be able to get our uh, initial admin password. All right. Perfect. So here's my initial admin password. I'm going to copy that, come back over here to the browser. And you can see here that uh, Jenkins is configured to run on localhost on 8080. So I'm going to just right click and say open in a new tab. And sure enough, here we go. Jenkins is up and running. So I'll paste in my initial admin password and click continue. Now, once this is up, Jenkins is going to ask you to install the suggested plugins. So let's just go ahead and do that. All of our plugins are installed now. And uh, at this point, you could create your first administrator user, but we're just going to go ahead and click skip and continue as admin. Uh, don't worry about configuring a Jenkins URL. We can just click save and finish. And uh, now Jenkins is ready. We can start using Jenkins. So click start using Jenkins. And here we are in the Jenkins UI. It hasn't changed in years, but it's good old Jenkins. So um, scrolling down here, so we skipped and created, we're going to use admin. All right. So first thing we need to do is we're going to need to configure Jenkins. Now, what I, uh, I, I talked about, the Jenkins file makes use of environment variables, but it also makes use of secret credentials. So let's configure both of those. The first three environment variables that we're going to create is LW underscore account, and that's the name of your Lacework account. I already showed you my Lacework account name is tech-ally, so that's what I'm going to be using. 
uh, we are also going to need to configure the LW underscore API key. And uh, that is this right here, this key ID. So I'm gonna copy that, come back over. And then Docker Hub is your Docker Hub username. So here's my Docker Hub account. My username is SM422. Um, so I, right here in the um, readme, I've, I've added a link to go straight to the configuration page. So I'm gonna click open in a new tab. Okay, now that we're in the configuration page, we can scroll down to the global properties and you can see right here is this environment variables checkbox. We'll check that and I'm gonna click add three times. We've got the three different environment variables and it's LW underscore account and mine was tech dash ally. Then it is LW underscore API underscore key and I'm gonna paste in my key. And then finally Docker Docker underscore hub and my Docker hub username, don't need that, is SM422. Now we can go ahead and just click save. Perfect. All right. So we've got our three environment variables configured. And so now we can move into the credentials. And it says the first thing that you're going to need is to add your password for Docker hub. So I have got my password stored over in one password. So I'm going to come over to Jenkins and uh, well, I think actually I included a link. Yes, right here. So you can say you can jump right to the credentials page by clicking here. So I'm going to open that in a new tab and I'm in the credentials page now. And with this, my username is SM Ford 22 and my password, I'll paste that in. And my ID is uh, the ID for this particular uh, configuration is Docker underscore hub and we'll do the same for the description docker underscore hub now this is exact you've got to you've got to um actually follow this to a t and i'll show you why um, if we look back here at the jenkins file uh you can see on line 23 that we are going to authenticate with docker hub using the credentials that are stored in that uh in that configuration docker underscore hub and the same thing here is on line 32, we're gonna next configure a credential with our Lacework API secret, and it's gonna be named Lacework underscore API secret. So let's go ahead and get that set up as well. Um, so here in the readme, uh, we can see here, the next one is uh, th this type of credential is called a secret text, and we're gonna call it Lacework underscore API underscore secret. So let's go back over to credentials. We're gonna save this one out. So here's our Docker Hub. We'll click add credential, secret text. And uh, over here is, this is our API, our Lifeswork API secret. So I'll go ahead and copy that. Again, the Jenkins file, it's this Lacework underscore API secret. Lacework underscore API underscore secret. I'll paste that for both the ID and the description and click OK. Perfect. And with that, now we've got all of our, we've got our three environment variables, our two credentials configured. And I think we're ready now to move on to creating a pipeline. Um, this particular this particular version of Jenkins has a, um, has a, in a user interface that's called Blue Ocean. It makes it really easy to create pipelines. So we're gonna use that uh, as uh, to get this pipeline going. So here on the Jenkins main page right now, you can see there's this button, Open Blue Ocean. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that link. And when you click Open Blue Ocean, it takes you right to a landing page to create a new pipeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Create New Pipeline. And it's going to ask me, where do you store your source code? Well, of course, we forked it over to my own personal GitHub. So I'm going to click GitHub. And in order for Jenkins to be able to authenticate with, uh, with GitHub, we need a personal access token. I don't have one created yet, so I'm going to click this link, create an access token here. That's going to take me right to my personal uh, GitHub account again, and I'm going to give this a name, Jenkins 
dash lacework dash tutorial. It's got all the scopes already checked uh, that it needs to be able to do this integration. Um, this is just a temporary token. If you're, um, once you're done with the tutorial, feel free to, to revoke it or delete it, whatever you need to do. But I've got my token here uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this to the clipboard. Go back over to Jenkins and I'm gonna paste this in and click connect. And with that token now, it's gonna see what organizations I belong to and it's gonna ask me, where is this repo? It's my personal scott4-io. So I'm gonna click that link. We'll scroll down here and there, sure enough, is Jenkins-Lacework-Tutorial. And I'm gonna click Create Pipeline. All right, so we've got the results now. Let's check it out. Perfect, great news. This container image has no vulnerabilities. So we uh, at, remember during build time, we patched that container. Uh, we ran a yum update. We grabbed any of the new uh, updates for it, and then we built the image and published it up. So this one has no vulnerabilities, so you could feel secure about releasing this now into production if that was the, your uh, next step. But we're not gonna have time today to get into continuous delivery. That's a different topic. This is really about the first step, which is just getting that relevant security data back to the developers so that they can continue with pushing products out as fast as possible uh, and have the, the assurance that there are no vulnerabilities in the images that they're building. Now, uh, last thing about this, uh, this short walkthrough is that, uh, as I mentioned, the, um, the Jenkins environment that we built here, it has been uh, spun up with the ability for persistence, meaning that if you want to save the state, if you would like to uh, free up some resources, but you want to keep Jenkins in the same configuration as before, you can run this command, docker compose dash p lacework down. And I'll just show you that right now. If I run that command, that stops docker that stops the, uh, the instances. You can see no containers are running. If I went over here to Jenkins, of course, and hit a refresh, Jenkins is not up. But if I come back up and I run the same docker compose dash p lacework up dash d, again, which we use to launch out the environment and do a refresh. Sure enough, Jenkins is getting ready to work. I think I'm gonna need that password one more time. Here we go, here's our admin password. And go ahead and type admin, paste in that password. And sure enough, our pipeline's still in the exact same state. We can see the last run, we'll go over to Blue Ocean. You can see the results of that last build. So all of this is persists. Now, if you're really completely done with this tutorial and you wanna just tear it all down or say you wanna start over from scratch, we can run the same command, the uh, lacework, I'm sorry, docker compose dash p lacework down, but this time we'll pass the dash v flag and that will actually tear down the volumes and, uh, and the docker network. Okay, so that's it for this version of up and running with lacework. Hopefully you found this valuable. Uh, if you have any feedback, you have comments, requests, you can, um, if you have ideas for episodes you'd like to see, you can always contact us at up and running at lacework.net. Until next time, thanks a lot.